We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. It's been a hot minute since we've done one of these. <laughs> How are you doing? It always feels real weird. It always feels really, really weird when we take a week off. And we seriously only took one week off. But it's been two weeks since we've done one. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing. That's the thing about it. Felt like yep. two. Because it is spikes. <laughs> because it is. Yes. All right, Kyle, we're going to do something we haven't done. It's it's February 20th, the day this is getting released. It's the 19th for us. We're releasing it on the 20th. That's how podcasting works. Um, we have yet... This is our first Slew Poops episode of the entire season. And there's a probably a good reason why, Jared, right? I, I, I just... <laughs> that may be it. This might be it. This might be it. Um, it just hasn't been... I mean, listen, the numbers don't lie. Like, whenever... So, straight up, straight up, I, I can go... I can... I could open up my my Spreaker account, my YouTube account. I could show you all the, all the uh, statistics from last season. Whenever we talk about basketball, numbers the numbers just take a big old dookie. So... Uh, thank you for the, the half of the audience who's actually participating in this. Because most of you just aren't even just aren't even here. But for those of you who are, hi. Hello. So, even when the basketball team is good, or at least when the basketball team is entertaining, even then we aren't super motivated to talk about basketball. But, man, this team has n not been anywhere close to good or entertaining this year S hence yeah. the uh the first slew poops of the ep uh, first slew poops episode of the season uh being delivered on february 20th yeah it's it's been a yeah very tough uh 2023 for uh the buckeyes uh basketball team here losing eight straight after their uh, big loss to Purdue, um, they lost by 27 points. And Holtman blamed the ref. He didn't blame the refs. He didn't bl He didn't like say we lost eight, because eight of in the row, refs. Eight but in he, a row. But he did criticize the refs. Like don't don't critic Holtman. Yeah. Holtman. Well, don't critic don't criticize the refs after losing by 27 points. Yeah, that's eight not a, a good look. Eight in a row here, Jared. But 13, 11 of the last 12. 13 of oh. the last 14. Oh, okay. You're games. better at math than me. You're better at math than me. Yeah, it's uh it's been bad. They've won twice this calendar year. They've won three games. Three games in the Big Ten this year. This is the worst Ohio State basketball team we have seen in a very long time very very long time yeah I, I don't i don't remember when the last time we saw a, a how really the hell did we win three team i have one i have one word for that rutgers i have two additional words for that northwestern which is actually one word but screw them it's two <laughs> yeah so there, there are three wins is iowa, i don't know how we beat iowa i don't know how we beat iowa, iowa northwestern and rutgers they they got they got on a hot streak. That that's what that's what happened. I mean, they scored ninety three points, which is the only time they scored more than seventy five all year. Who twenty twenty three year that is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, not 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 counting the Robert Morris's of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we should have known. We should have known. Like, we, this is what happens with Ohio State basketball team. I feel like we always get, like, one out-of-conference game early on that makes us feel really good. That was Ohio State not just beating, but demolishing Cincinnati, you know, back in November. Yeah, and it, it's so weird because, like, at the beginning of the year, it's like, okay, all right, you, uh, you, you, you played some good teams um, over in Maui. You... You came up close against San Diego State, who was a good team. You 
you trounced Cincinnati, you beat Texas Tech, who at the time was um, seemed like a pretty good team, a good ranked team. You put up a good fight at Duke. You beat um, Rutgers in a close one. Um, you almost came away with a win against North Carolina. Then going into 2023, you're like, okay, this is this is a pretty good team. Maybe maybe they can make a, a splash into the uh, to the NCAA tournament, and then. And then the uh, field goal missed Jared, and it just seems like the uh, the ba- basketball team just hasn't recovered since uh, since the football team lost. Wow. Wow, you're you're seriously gonna blame this on Noah Ruggles? That's not very sloopcast no, of you, Kyle. I'm not. I'm not. I know. I'm I know. I, know, I, I love know, Noah I Ruggles. I know. I do too. A true, um, Buc- true Buckeye. But yeah, it's. <laughs> the it's officials tough. like like, like you, you you look at this team and you see you see some good players here and i'm looking at uh sends and ball here um yeah it's just ensuing they, they got some good te- they got some good players here they just aren't molding they just not molding well and a lot of that is that they only had one returning player from last year's squad here like it's and it really shows here it really does show so, but but you look at other teams too, and again, Ohio State isn't the Dukes. They're not the Kentuckys of the world too. But why 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 couldn't they be? Why couldn't they be? Yeah, and what, and, and, what and those, we're and those with... teams are able to just plug and play players, um, pull in freshmen, pull in um, people from the. Uh, for the transfer portal and be able to plug and play there. What What's so different this year about Ohio State other than only one player um, was back from last year? And it, maybe yeah. that's it. But but better teams deal with that all the time. And like, yes. why why isn't yes. Ohio State one of the better teams? I think is a is a question. Ohio State is not Ohio State basketball isn't Ohio State football. We can say that. Um, only one national title in the history of Ohio State basketball. It's it's been uh, sixty years since Ohio State won a national title. Like, no, but we typically aren't burning trash can. Yes, no, one hundred percent agree on that. One hundred percent agree on that. I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm not saying that Ohio State basketball is or has ever been Ohio State football. It's not. It's not. That's fine. But this is this is very bad. And I don't I don't think it's I think it is it is it is time. It is past time where we start talking about Holtman's job. Um and the one argument I'd be willing to to hear right now, as far as like pro Holtman, is that like he has a really good recruiting class on the floor right now, and he has an excuse to play the freshman. You know, is he doing that enough? Different conversation, different day. But the the one argument I'll hear right now, pro Holtman, is. He has this good recruiting class. He has an excuse to play him. He has a choose to give a cho- a a chance to give them experience and see what he can do with these guys in their second year next year. And they have at least so far a pretty decent recruiting class lined up in the 2023 recruiting class as well. So, you get those group of freshmen in here with those sophomores. Maybe, maybe Ohio State can make a run next year. And if you want to make a pro Holtman, give him one more year argument, that's the argument. That's yeah, the only at, argument at this, I'm willing to hear. Yeah, at this point, like at the beginning of the year, during the season, and even when Ohio State's starting to lose more and more games here, I was still, I still had um, Holtman's back. I, I was like, I, I, I believe in Holtman. I believe what he's doing. I believe um, he's an 
that Ohio State basketball is in good hands with Holtman here, but man, these games, these last few games here, I just been just they're just not in it. They're yeah, just, it's not just not in it. in it to be able to win the games. I mean, look, look at the past games here. I mentioned that they lost to Purdue by 27 points. They lost to um, uh, they lost to Iowa by 17, 21. They, you only put up 41 points yeah. against Michigan State at home. Yeah. You lose Northwestern, which you sh- at home should have won that game. Yeah. Should have beaten um, Michigan. Should have beaten Wisconsin. Uh, it's just they find ways to lose, and sometimes and recently lose big, lose big here, and it's un- it's unacceptable right now. It really is, and and a lot of it too. You look, you look at the the way that they're playing uh, ball, the way that they're playing um, all of their plays there. I I just don't think the way that he's coaching this team. It's it's working for them this year. It, it's it's or, a lot of uh, or working for um, them. Period. If we're being honest, yeah, it, it's it's a lot of um, setting screens to get your one on one matchups, and then hopefully you get a good shot up. That's that's really yeah. what I see here. And, and then you take away Zed Key this this weekend here, and they're they're just they're just not in the game at all, not in it at all. Yeah, it's. We, we we need to take a serious serious look at Holtman's record. This is now his sixth season at Ohio State. And Holtman bashing? I mean, I wouldn't say bashing, um, but I'm also not going to pull any punches. Um, six seasons at Ohio State. In six seasons... Sure, you meant fire. Sure, 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 Zach, you meant fire. Um, six seasons at Ohio State. Uh, no Big Ten titles. Has yet to surpass 30 wins in a season. Has yet to make it to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament. In six seasons. And you, you can say, well, one of those postseasons was canceled due to COVID. Okay. That, that's, that's, that's true. But, you know, they had a stacked team. At least it appeared to be a stacked team ready for the tournament in the 21-22 season and got bounced in the first game. They have yet to make it to the second location of the NCAA tournament. It's not acceptable in six seasons. And I'm saying six seasons because they're obviously not going to the tournament this year. Mm-hmm. So we can go ahead and just count this season as, as a bust as well. Yeah, it's, it, it's just tough because I... Holtman Holtman is just a great person, but I mean, I, cool. it's 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 a job. I'm a great it's a job. person. It, it's, it's, a great... it's a job, and if and if you're not doing good at your job, you you got to be let go. Yeah, I'm a great person too. It doesn't mean I'm a good basketball coach. <laughs> Jared should not coach the team. Yeah, exactly. It's that th- this isn't about being a good person. Uh, that's just that's not what it's about. Mm-hmm. Kyle, jump back into your memory banks for me. Actually, hold on before before I go there. I mentioned six seasons at Ohio State. Holtman, no thirty win seasons, no Big Ten titles, no Sweet Sixteens, yep. nothing beyond that. Mm-hmm. Now, over a large, much larger, I acknowledge this, much larger number of seasons, uh, thirteen seasons, I believe. Uh, of of Thad Mata. Three times. Three times Ohio State exceeded 30 wins under Thad Mata. 
nine Big Ten titles. Five Sweet 16 appearances. Three Elite Eights. Two Final Fours. And an NCAA runners-up. I uh, can't join tonight. Just wanted to add that I canceled cable to avoid even accidentally seeing the team play. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, but that's crazy. I never, well, I guess that big 10, big 10 titles can be a little misleading because you could technically have two, two big 10 in titles one season. in one season. Yes. Which he, he's done that. But, but at that same once, time, maybe twice at the same time, Kyle, does that not mean that Holtman has had six times two opportunities to win the Big Ten title and has not done it? That is true. That is true. Yeah. yeah does, does Thad want to come back? Yeah, he's not he's not doing too well over at Butler. Yeah, that's that's right, Chop Daddy. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know Holtman's first season excuse me matt Mata's first season didn't really go anywhere second season marked improvement wins the big 10 um doesn't go deep into the tournament third season at ohio state goes 15 and 1 in the big 10 only loses four games all season and goes to the national title game at his his third season at Ohio State. That that's what Thad Mata did in three years. His fourth year, he won it all. And by all, I meant the N, N, the NIT tournament. Listen, they had a bunch of really guys, and they all <laughs> went pro after the after the national title game. Yeah. <laughs> uh. But yeah, you know, you, you gotta. I vote fire Gene. Nah, uh, no, I don't think so. Um, Kyle, do you remember? If you jump back in your memory banks, mm-hmm. do you remember why Ohio State parted with Thad Mata? Um, it claimed it was related to it was health issues, but sure. But yeah, there there was just a lot of just negative recruiting. Negative recruiting, which we heard that a lot with uh, certain coaches on the football team. But yeah, a lot of um, negative recruiting gets that health issues, and it seemed there was just some dispute inside the locker room too, I believe. But a but a lot of it had to do with Thad Mata not being able his health. Thad Mata's excuse me, health issues and how that was affecting him on the recruiting trail. Right? Mm-hmm. So Ohio State all of a sudden wasn't getting like big recruiting classes anymore. And I don't ha- we don't have recruiting data because the basketball recruiting data does not go back that far as far as like team rankings goes. Earliest team rankings I could find were 2011 on the uh, 24-7 for sports sites. But in 2011, the sixth overall recruiting class, 2013, the 39th, 2014, the sixth, 2015, the fifth highest recruiting classes. And then you saw a pretty sharp drop with the recruiting classes in 2016, 17, and 18. It, he goes 42nd, 24th, and 27th. And so, you know, you're going from like top 10 recruiting classes falling outside the top 23 straight years. Yeah. And you had Thad Mata's worst season as the, as the head coach in his last year in 2016, 17. So it's time to make a change. Which honestly, maybe better than uh, than this year's Holtman's team. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What are they? They're currently eleven and sixteen. So yeah, maybe more losses, 
more losses yeah. than any team Thad's had too. And even even if already they more losses out, than the even Big if Ten. they went out for that's fifteen wins there, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the yeah, it's this this season that Ohio State's currently putting up is worse than the season that got Thad modified, and Thad Mata had a lot more juice that he had, positive juice he had created for himself, but. Again, one of the reasons why you moved on from Thad Mata was issues on the recruiting trail. Now, Holtman had a hand in the 2018 class as well. That's sort of a shared class. So, 27th. 2019, 14th. Okay, we're back inside the top 20. 2020, 47th recruiting class. 2021, 49th recruiting class. Now he does come back strong last year with an eighth ranked recruiting class. So back in the top 10, which again, if we're talking about reasons to give Holtman another shot, it could be the fact that he just brought in a top 10 recruiting class last season. And as of now, recruiting class still has time to go. It's still an active recruiting class, but as of now, the 2013 recruiting class is sixth in the country. Bronny James is still out there. I'm just saying that's that's the one and only argument to be made here, in my opinion. But again, if we look at the recruiting classes, we don't have team rankings going back all that far. We do, however, have individual rankings going back all that far. Kyle, according to 24-7 Sports, I collected the top 20 recruits in Ohio State basketball history. Okay. Top 20. All right. Of these top 20, how many were brought in by Holtman? Uh, I have those highlighted for you if you check the show notes. By Holtman in the top twenty. Yeah. It is six. Without even look it without even looking, I was gonna say like two or three. So it's six. Oh, okay. More than I however, thought. However. Okay. However. However. There's a there's a however here. All right. Um, DJ Carton never really mm. even played for Ohio State. Yep. Um, Chapman is in the current recruiting class. Mm-hmm. Uh, Malachi Branham. Okay. Um, we have Mobley who's in the 2024 recruiting class, so he's not even enrolled yet. Scotty Middleton in the 2023 recruiting class. And EJ Liddell. So, realistically speaking, we're talking about guys who actually contributed at Ohio State. It's like two guys. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, if you look at Holtman, Greg Oden, B.J. Mullins, Jared Sellinger, Daquan Cook, William Buford, D'Angelo Russell, Deshaun Thomas, Mike Conley, uh, Bates Diop, David Lighty. Uh, was Lighty Holtman? No, Lighty was not was not Mata, was he? Yeah. No, he was. Yeah, he was Mata, yeah. Yeah, I think that was his first recruiting class. Anyway, you see my point. Yes, I meant that. Yes, I meant that. Um, you, but you see my point, right? We've not seen... We've not seen Holtman bring in amazing stud talent at any point. At no point... So far. Mm -hmm. 
again, you, we can talk about the recruiting classes that are coming. We'll talk about the recruiting class that just came in. But he's been here for six years. So you're talking about guys who've actually come in and contributed. The best you got here is EJ Liddell and Malachi Brenham. That's those are the two. Those are the two guys you can hang your hat on out of the Holtman recruiting classes. There's been a ton of great role players, a ton of players who I loved watching, who I really like. But if we're talking about recruiting stars, if we're talking about recruiting stars, Holman's never brought them in. Nope. And even the guys who are coming in, who I mentioned already, who are in this top 20, none of them are cracking the top 10 in, in, you know what I mean? Like, there's not a there's not a there's not an Odin, a Cook, a, a D'Angelo Russell coming in, looking strictly at the recruiting stars. There's just not one here. I don't know what Holtman has done to earn a seventh year. So whom should we go after to replace Holtman? I here's here's kind of, my question. It's kind of like the football part too. It's like unless somebody unless somebody decides to leave an organization, then you grab them right away. There's you, you got to find someone who's up and coming, who's um who's young and um has a lot of upside to them, and I. I don't really know too much about the coaching side, coaches in, in the basketball world, though. So I, so I couldn't tell you, Jared. I couldn't tell no, you. No, and I'm not nearly as well-versed in college basketball as I am college football. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to sit here and rattle off like five to ten names like I probably could do if you asked me that same question in regards to football. Um, I know one of the names I've seen thrown around a lot is the Charleston head coach, uh, Pat Keasley. I've seen that name tossed around a decent amount. Um, I'm not going to pretend like I know if that's a good idea or a bad idea. I, I'm just, again, I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to know nearly as much about college basketball as I do college football. I, I do not dedicate near the amount of time to watching, like, I will watch literally any two teams play college football on a random Saturday night. I will. I'll watch. I'll watch Hawaii play Boise. I'll do it. But I, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the basketball stuff nearly that deep. But I, so, but here's my question to you, Zach. Given what we've talked about with Holtman, And his track record at Ohio State, his recruiting, his on the court, all of it. Would you hire him? Forget who do you get to replace him. The question I ask you, would you hire him? Or are you keeping him just because you already have him? If you wouldn't be willing to hire him, why would you keep him? That's my question. You're Ohio State. And again, Ohio State football or Ohio State basketball is not Ohio State football. I understand that. It's not a prestige job. Ohio State football could go get could go steal a coach from nearly nearly any school in the country. They could. Ohio State football could do that. There, there's a very mm-hmm. small select list of schools that Ohio State couldn't just go in and steal the head coach from. Ohio State basketball is not does not nearly have that sort of luxury or that sort of prestige. No. But they do have money. What they have is money. I mean, look at 
look at Alabama. <laughs> look at Alabama this year in basketball. Like, yes, Alabama has a good basketball team for like the first time in seems like forever. Yeah. Would have fired Holtman a month ago. I I don't see the value in firing him mid season. I, I just don't I don't I don't see it. I don't know what that I don't know what that achieves, to be honest with you. That's just my opinion on that. Mm-hmm. Unless you're getting a new hire now. Yeah, exactly. The only way you do something like that is if you know you could you know it's going to help you get to the next guy. Yeah. If if there's someone out there looking for a job and you absolutely want them and you want to go out there and you want to get that person without doing it with your coach still being around, then okay, but how do you feel about Chris Collins asking for cousin Jay? I don't have again, I'm I I'm not I'm not that incredibly well I, I just I, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not going to sit here and have a strong opinion on on basketball coaches because I just I don't know. I I just don't like does he win games? Could he win games here? Then bring him in like I, I, I just I'm not going to break down the X's and the O's of it. I just I don't know. Um, to me, go get me someone who can recruit and someone who can teach the team not to turn the damn ball over constantly. Yeah, like, it's been a staple of literally every Holtman team. They don't finish, and they turn the ball over. So shouldn't those be two things? Shouldn't those two things be the hallmark of good coaching, not turning the ball over? And it seems this year, you add on on what's wrong with the team this year, too, is that they can't play any damn defense. The defense has just been horrendous as well, too. And at least that, that was something that Ohio, they had that had Ohio State going for them in previous years. But this year, it's nothing. Like n- They have, like, nothing going for them. Yeah. Like, like you, can look at, you can look at the, you can look at the sti- statistics here. And I can't really tell you, like, what what they have good going for them. They, they have like no. nothing going for them. They can't, they can't cause turnovers. They're like almost dead last in try and steals per game. They, they're, um, they turn the ball over, um, a lot. They're not good at three point shooting. They're not good at two point shooting. I, I just, I don't see anything going for this, this year for this team. Yeah. Um, turning the ball over 11.2 times per game, which isn't horrendous. It's not good. It's not good. But you talk, Kyle's talking about defense. They only create 11.1 which ranks them 295th in the country. Which, for those that do not know, uh, there are about uh, 350 teams. So, the bottom yeah. sixth. bottom Almost the bottom sixth. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, if, you, if you're looking for something to hang your hat on here, they are in the top 50 of offensive rebounds. And, and it's because of one guy there. And then when he's not in, when he's not in, they lose by almost 30 points. You're also getting a lot of <laughs> offensive rebounds because you're missing a lot of shots probably. Yeah. Uh, and if we look at their field goal percentage, they're 131st in the country. Uh, stopping in to say Jared is. Huh? I don't even know what that means. Yeah, it's there's nothing there's nothing here. Field goal percentage, 
uh, they're sitting at 36%. Two-point percentage, they're at 50%. Like, every two-point attempt, only half of them go in. That's including layups. That's including, you know, it's... There's literally nothing happening. There's just nothing happening with this team. All right, so I guess, I guess final verdict then, Jared, here. If you're a Gene Smith, after the Big Ten tournament's over, say Ohio State, you know, it, it, it's just silly for me to even think think that. They, lo- they lose their opening game in yeah. the... Uh, in the Big Ten tourney here. Yeah, yeah. They're going to have a terrible you're seed. G- They're going to play somebody good. You're, you're Gene Smith. Yeah. Well, well, not necessarily because they would play. So oh, that's because right. Because of how the, Big Ten, how the Big Ten does it. They, that's right. They have a chance to win their, their first one because they also would play one of the bottom four teams in the Big Ten. But then they would play yeah. one of the top four teams then after that. Okay, so let me think about this for a second. Who can Ohio State actually beat in the Big Ten? Rutgers, because they apparently. <laughs> because they both because they beat Northwestern but then lost to Northwestern. They beat Iowa but then lost to Iowa. Rutgers, now they did. Man. They did beat the Rutgers. Is Rutgers. The answer is Rutgers. <laughs> But that Rutgers game was before the slide. That that was that was twenty twenty two Ohio State basketball. This is true. Uh, Minnesota, but then they they but then they lost to Minnesota, which that's Minnesota's only conference victory. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kyle, I want you to say that again for everyone no, listening. I, I don't because that, that that hurt really bad for me to say. I'm just saying, if we're putting together a list of pros and cons for do you keep or do you hand over Holtman, like. So if if the standings are right now, Jared, if the standings are right now. Yeah. It would be Ohio State versus Nebraska. Okay. So has they played Nebraska yet this year? Uh, They have. Um, let's see. And Nebraska they, lost 63 they, to 60, uh, in Lincoln. Is that the only Nebraska game? So, so like, so like so what uh, Z spike yeah. says, uh, so you're telling me there's a chance. I mean, there's a chance. I do kind of look like Elmo. What the hell does that even mean? And y'all are uh, saying this, they, and you don't they, even realize we have an Elmo emote in in Discord. But then they would play the, if they would win, they would play the number five seed. Again, this is if it ends right now. And they would play the the number five seed, which is Iowa. Who we beat? Yeah. All right, all right. Backtracking. Even let's just say they win one game. Yeah. If they won or no games, you're Gene Smith, Jared. What's your decision on Coach Holtman right now? It's, it's time to move on. Thanks for the recruiting class. Thanks for the thanks for that recruiting class and this recruiting class. Uh, thanks for setting the next guy up. Here's your papers. Jared, he just signed a contract. I don't care. You're high state. Is, you have money. I don't care. What is the only way or what's what's a way or different ways that Holtman is able to stay at Ohio State? Well, there's just the money. He just signed a contract extension. And again, Ohio State basketball is not Ohio State football. Maybe they just aren't willing to pay him out. Okay, like may screw it. Like You say he had a really good recruiting class here. He has a really good recruiting class coming in. It's basketball. We really don't want to pay the money to pay him out. 
So you just let him stick around for a year because fuck it. Like, that's the case. Again, that's the case to keep Holtman. And that doesn't feel like a case that should make you feel good what, about yourself. What, what if he's able, what if he's able to get, um, I don't um, care. Le, LeBron James Jr. in. That, that would probably move Ohio State up to close to fourth. Fourth, maybe third recruiting class. I mean, you went, I, I get that he's LeBron James's kid, but he's not even, he wouldn't even be the best kid in Ohio State's recruiting class. And I understand that there's other value there. Um, in, in that, in that class, according to the 24 um, seven composite, he would be the best Ohio State recruit in that class. I understand what the composite says. Um, my point is this. It doesn't matter. Holtman is John Cooper in basketball. I think that's a compliment that I think that's a compliment that Holtman doesn't deserve. Yeah. Cooper had good recruiting classes and actually won a bunch of games. Yeah. I don't Bryce better than Bronny. This is true. The younger LeBron yeah, is, is but, the better but, LeBron. But but there's there there are other you bring in LeBron James's kid, all of a sudden LeBron James is gonna be around the program, um, which will help that starts a snowball of of improving your recruiting classes. There there is value beyond what Bronny James can bring for you on the court if you bring him in. And if you're LeBron James, not Junior, if you're LeBron James, you call up Gene Smith because you have his number. You do. You call up Gene Smith and you say, hey, um, is, is Holtman coming back or not? And then if I'm Gene Smith, my answer is, what do you think, Mr. LeBron James, sir? <laughs> LeBron destroys, that's not even true. He's literally won championships at two different locations. How is that destroying teams? At three. Three locations, Jerry. Championships? Yeah. No. He's not won a championship in L.A. I'm pretty sure he did, Jared. That, that was the COVID year. Does that, does that count? It, it technically counts, Jared. It technically does. I'm getting a lot of no's in the chat. I well, got an asterisk, up, then if, I got if you pull no's. Up NBA championships. You'll see, just like Bama's title. If you have okay, you know what? You say just like Bama's title, won. but you know goddamn well if we won that, we'd have hung the banner and we'd all have merchandise. All right, now, if we won, that's a different story. Exactly. How many championships has LeBron Heaven James Love does won? deserve respect, but Four. that's that's besides the point. Last I looked, Heaven Love didn't win it in Minnesota and Cleveland. Sorry. Is that where he was, Minnesota? I don't even remember. Um, yeah, so my 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 response to LeBron James or to yeah, to LeBron James if I'm Gene Smith, it's like, what do you think, sir? <laughs> what what coach can I get for you to get to get your son to sign today? I'm a K-Love fan. Yeah, I am too. I love Kevin Love. I don't know how that's relevant to the LeBron James discussion. Because LeBron won one with Kevin Love. Kevin Love never won one without LeBron. It's not relevant to the conversation. Um... What the hell am I even talking about right now, Kyle? Why am I talking about I Kevin Love? Care. 
point here is um, I, I get LeBron James to be the coach. I know that's not going to happen, but imagine if it did. He wants to play. He wants to play in the league with his son, and that's adorable. But LeBron James, what if I offer you the opportunity to coach both of your sons at Ohio State? Am I kidding right now? Yes. If I thought it was realistic, would I do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're saying that's the only way, if you were in Gene Smith's um, shoes, yeah, that Holtman would stay is if LeBron James says Holtman, Holtman should be the coach. If Holtman stays, Bronny's going to sign. I say, sir, yes, sir. And I, I re-sign Holtman, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, it pains me, it pains me to say because, yeah, Holtman does need to go. It does. It pains me to, to say that, but... The team, the team deserves better. The program deserves better. Buckeye Nation deserves better. It's time to move on. It is time, Z Spikes. Yes. Yeah, I mean that. That's just the thing. Six years, no Sweet Sixteens. And you can say five year. You can remove the COVID year if you want to, and say five years. Okay. But you can't get out of the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. That's not acceptable. And I, yeah, I'm just, and I'm done. I'm just, I'm done. I don't know how else to say it. You're Ohio State. If you want to make it happen, you can. What is it? It's buying out the current contract, which I understand would be a lot of money. And just go getting the best guy who's up for grabs right now. Which is most guys. You can outpay. Kyle just said there's 350 schools in Division I basketball. You could go get... What, Kyle... Of those 350, you could get your pick of, what, 300 of them? 250 yep. of them? Yep. You can just, you can out, you can outpay those schools. And just say, come play here. Or come coach here. Done. Over. I don't know. I'm just saying, you wouldn't, if you were Ohio State, you wouldn't hire Holtman right now. That's 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 the bottom line. Yeah. All right, Kyle. Uh, that's it. That's the end of the episode. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Anything in Kyle's corner, man? I, I, I wish there was some. I wish that there was good things we could talk about the basketball team here. Not much. Not much in really in football land either. Um, but somebody mentioned here. I do. I do want to mention it here. Uh, the outdoor hockey game with Ohio State and Michigan up in Cleveland. There, I thought that was I thought that was kind of cool, but but also color on color. Yeah, did you see that? I did. Make it happen in football. <laughs> Make, Make it, it happen. happen in football. Kyle, I got a I got a question for you. Did you mm -hmm. like last, not last week, we didn't record one last week, damn Super Bowl, uh, week before last, when we, we got a lot of engagement out of the uniform mm -hmm. I liked episode. it. Yeah, that was fun. That was, that was that was a fun episode to do. You you want to do something similar next week? Instead of talking about basketball ever again? Well, we may talk about it. We may talk about it when, when a certain event happens, but uh, certain yeah, event. sure. What certain what? What we just talked about, damn it, Jared. <laughs> you know I have the memory of a goldfish, right? Uh, so what right. would this be this um interaction 
conversation be, Jared? It's something similar. I don't want to give it away. Okay. But I'm just saying, we got a lot of engagement out of that. We should probably do another episode like it. Not mm-hmm. the exact same episode, obviously, but something like it. Yeah. And and before anybody says anything about the hat I'm wearing, no, it is not the university. It doesn't look like the university for what it's not. It doesn't look like no. it. It doesn't look like a Georgia hat. There. There. I'll wear this backwards. There. There. Now, now, now you don't see the, uh, the bulldog there. So, okay. It's a different, if it's a, it's a different G bulldog. Yes. <laughs> All right. Got to, got to support, got to, got to support, um, high school athletics. There you go. Okay, Kyle. Uh, that's it. That's the end of the episode. Everyone come hang out in the discord server. Um, we have a lot of fun. It's, uh, we, we talked a lot about soup this week. Soup. Because what else are we going to do? Talk about basketball? We make, we make fun, fun of, of Jared. Jared. Yeah, they, they do that a lot. They make, they, they've, they called me Elmo today for some reason. I still don't understand that one. <laughs> Good recipes to be had. We do not do soups. We do not do recipes for soups. God damn it. Oh, I got I got some, I got something in Kyle's corner actually, Jared. Your thoughts, Jared, on Tears of the Kingdom coming out. Ooh, Zelda talk? How have we done Zelda talk at the top of the show for a long time? Not, um, not since uh, Breath of the Wild came out. Yeah. <laughs> we did that. It seemed like like hey Kyle, tell us a little bit about about the last week that you played it. <laughs> We were doing Breath of the Wild updates for a while there. Um, you know, because sometimes you got to do shit in the off season. What the absolute hell? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. We're, we're deleting <laughs> that one. That, please. Thank we're you. We're deleting that one. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know, man. Um, the, <laughs> what I really didn't appreciate about that one is that it had someone's Patreon in the top left of it. And that was that was the line like it was almost worth deleting. It was worth deleting, don't get me wrong. But then like that was a step too far for me. Like someone was proud of that and wanted wanted money for it. Oh, sorry, podcast people. We have no idea what we're talking about. Um Probably a good thing. Oh, it is a good <laughs> thing. Uh it, it looks fun. It it looks like it's just gonna be Breath of the Wild too, and that's exactly what I want it to be. I want it to be Breath yep. of the Wild with add-ons, with a bigger map of more places to go, but it looks to be the core mechanics of the game look to be the same. Um, it looks to be a very similar, if not the same map, but expanded, which some people are mad about. I'm all for it. It's a great map. Reuse it, build upon it. All for that. Um, uh, the... The textures and everything look to be upgraded in the game. Uh, it's probably about as good as the Switch can do at this point. Um, they'll 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 do everything they can to optimize the ever living hell out of the underpowered Switch, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. All right, that's it, Jared. That's all I got. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music uh, is a Cleveland-based artist. Uh, her name is Madison Pruitt, um, and uh, we're we're gonna play a song by Madison here at the uh, end of the show. So, with all that being said, Kyle, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Madison Pruitt. <laughs>